Hey guys! So uh, Taylor and I have been getting a lot of questions about our daughter Henley and her diagnosis. So on January 5th when she was born, she was diagnosed with esophageal atresia and a tracheal esophageal fistula. So those are a lot of big words and it's a bit of a confusing diagnosis. So we're going to take a couple minutes to just explain it to our family and friends so that they understand. So there are a number of different forms of EA, which is what esophageal atresia is shortened to. Henley's case um, is typically classified as type C. So we're going to talk about type C because that's the only one that we have experience in and can speak to at all. So when Henley was born, essentially what happened is her esophagus had grown as a blind pouch at the top, meaning just a pouch that was closed off and nothing could get down. So if she tried to swallow, it would come back up. At the top of her stomach though, a bottom half of her esophagus did grow up, but instead of growing up to the top half, it grew into her trachea. And this is called a tracheal esophageal fistula. And fistula basically just means something grew into a spot it wasn't supposed to. So when Henley was a couple of days old, she had a surgery. They went in, in the surgery, and removed the bottom part of her esophagus from her trachea, and they sutured that up so that it would heal. Then they opened up the blind pouch at the top from her esophagus, and they connected those two pieces together to form one long tube to create a functioning esophagus for her. Now, a couple of the complications that can occur with this condition um, include, number one, the fact that there is a connected part between the two pieces that doesn't like to stay open very much. So sometimes Henley has to go in and get that dilated so that those muscles will continue to stretch and be wide open so that she can avoid choking when she is eating or um, trying to swallow. Her trachea is also a little bit less strong than the average baby's trachea because it was operated on. So that can make it easier for her to lose her breath if she chokes or something like that. Um, but that will continue to get better and better as she grows bigger. The other complication that can occur for her is the fact that because this bottom part of her esophagus is being pulled up to meet the top, the natural physiology of her stomach doesn't look the same as everybody else's. It doesn't have this part at the top that stops things like reflux and regurgitation from splashing up into her throat. So that makes it harder on her surgical site to heal, but it also bothers her and makes her get frustrated and breathe heavily and those types of things. So basically right now, Henley's still at SickKids and what we're trying to find for her is a balance between treating her esophagus, making sure it's nice and big so that she can swallow and eat, but also treating her reflux so that it's not splashing up, damaging her throat and bothering her and making her um, not feel well. So typically the outcome for most kids with this condition is that they grow up to lead a pretty normal life and they do very well. Um, the first little part is always the hardest to figure out how to balance those treatments and what types of procedures or, or medicines or treatments that each baby needs. Um, but for Henley, we're still in the process of figuring those things out. So as we go, we'll continue to um, keep our family and friends updated and let you guys know how it goes.